Good evening. Uh, it is six o'clock on Monday, November the 16th. I'm Dustin Seaton, the president of Arkansans for Gifted and Talented Education, or AGIT, uh, as well as the GT specialist at the Northwest Arkansas Education Service Cooperative. And tonight we have our introduction uh, and uh, Q&A with the, the directors of the Arkansas Governor School at Arkansas Tech University. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Jeff Woods. He's the co-director of Arkansas Governor School and professor of history at Arkansas Tech University. And he's going to give a, a quick presentation with his co-director, uh, Dr. Robin Lacey at Arkansas Tech University as well. Uh, so students, if you're just now joining us, teachers, if you're just now joining us, uh, feel free to use the Q&A chat at the bottom uh, in Zoom. Or if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can add a question in the comments and we will try to bounce back and forth between the two platforms. I, I believe they're going to do a quick presentation and then about 10, 15 minutes into the presentation, open it up for any questions. So feel free to sit back and relax. You don't have to worry about unmuting or muting or changing your video backdrop. Uh, tonight's webinar features just a great, uh, easy, easygoing, relaxing opportunity. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Woods uh, and, and let you start your presentation. Yeah, thanks, Dustin. I really appreciate you having us. Uh, so my understanding is that we have both students and we have uh, teachers and counselors, people that, that uh, you know, gifted and talented directors that, that, that might open things up, opportunities for students. So what I'm gonna do is kind of give the presentation that I usually give at schools, just give a little background. And then uh, as Dustin said, we'll, we'll open up for, for questions after that. So if you're unfamiliar with Arkansas Governor's School, uh, this is a four week, residential program for 400 of the best and brightest uh, rising seniors in the state. Um, so we accept 400 students every year. Um, last year, due to uh, COVID, uh, we had to go online, uh, but Governor School is designed as a residential program and we will be on campus if at all possible. <laughs> this summer. Uh, if we need to do a hybrid program that's partially online, partially face-to-face, -face, uh, we'll do that. Um, if we have to go all online, we'll do that. But um, our intent is to go full residential program. So the biggest question that, that I get uh, from people that are interested in, in, in governor school is, well, why do this, right? Um, there's a lot of reasons to do governor school, but let me give you four of the, the biggest. Um, the first reason is college applications. Uh, Governor School looks great on college applications. Uh, these are nationally recognized selective programs for gifted and talented students. Um, they've been, we've had governor schools in almost every state in the country, uh, but any university, any college that you apply to, they're gonna know what a governor school is and they, they will know that it sets you apart. Um, it's also one of those extra things, uh, you know, there are a lot of students who have good grades and have good test scores, but Governor School is one of those extra things that, that shows that you can, um, you can adapt and adjust to a, a uh, on-site residential kind of program and uh, that you can fit into a sort of college level community. Uh, and so it, it's great for demonstrating that. Plus, you know, um, there, there's just all of those great experiences that you get just from being away from home and, and doing this kind of thing. So college applications, also uh, scholarships, um, particularly in Arkansas, it, it's remarkable to me the number of uh, former AGS students who sit on scholarship committees. <laughs> and so it really does help <laughs> quite a bit. Um, just being part of that community and, and having those kinds of connections. Um, so college applications, first thing. Second thing, it's completely free. Um, we are blessed to be in a state where uh, the legislature completely funds uh, Arkansas Governor School. Uh, most states in the country have, uh, are, are not in that situation anymore. Uh, they, the students have to pay for part of it or they have to go to some kind of uh, private foundation funding. Um, but we are lucky that we are still completely state supported. So it's completely free. All you have to do is get to campus, get home, and the rest of it we pay for, tuition, food, lodging, everything. Uh, the third reason, uh, and this one appeals to students, I think more than anybody, 
is that there, there are no grades at, at governor school. <laughs> your, your evaluation is getting in. And then once you're in and you're on campus, you're taking classes. It's kind of like a, a small uh, college environment. You know, you, you go to class three or four hours a day and then you have a bunch of free time. And, and um, uh, but in those classes, you know, you, you don't get grades. There's not that kind of evaluation. And we, and we do that. Um, it, it's actually really important to the program and, and it's important to the sort of pedagogical theory of, of, of the program. Um, people tend to be creative and think outside of the box and take risks when they don't have grades and teachers and parents and that, that kind of evaluation hanging over your head. And so there's a lot of ability to experiment and cross disciplinary lines and try some things that you haven't tried before. Um, so without the grades, that's a, that's a special experience. And I would argue that um, most students, this may be the only time in your life where you really get that opportunity. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's a kind of pure learning environment because of that. Um, and then fourth and probably most important are the lifelong connections that you make to people. Um, yeah, you're going to meet some great faculty. Uh, you're going to meet some great alumni. We bring in people to speak who uh, can help you with connections in life. Um, you know, we, we had a speaker the last couple of years who's worked for Disney and he's helped students get internships and those sorts of things. So you'll meet those kinds of people and you'll have those connections to alumni. But honestly, the, the, the biggest connections you'll make are to your peers. Uh, there's just something special that happens when you put 400 really bright kids in the same place at the same time. And, you know, I know people that have gone to governor school who have met their spouse at governor school and are still married. I know people who've met their business partners at governor school and are still in business. Um, and, you know, there are lifelong relationships to be made here. It really is. And it's such a special time in your life when you're 17 and you're getting ready to you know, you're getting ready to go to college and you, you're getting ready to vote for the first time and you're deciding what you want to do with your life. It, it's, it's just really nice to be around other people that are experiencing that uh, and can share that with you and give you kind of a broader perspective than what you might get at, at your high school. Um, so those connections are, are you know, that's, that's really what governor school is about for me. Um, <clears throat> so, um, this year, Governor School runs from July 5th to, uh, to August 1st. Um, a little bit of history about Governor School. I'm a historian. I apologize. I have to have my, my history slides. Uh, so uh, Governor School started in, in North Carolina in the 1960s. Um, it was really designed to keep uh, the best and brightest students closer to home. Uh, they were places like North Carolina and, and other Southern states were getting brain drained. So a lot of their students were going to the East Coast or the West Coast. And so the idea was that, you know, you could use governor's school to make those connections so that people could get creative and, and start businesses, maybe go to college at home and uh, really contribute to Cold War industry. A lot of this was a, a, a byproduct of the, of the Cold War. It's changed over the years, really. Uh, it's more about innovative uh, approaches to, to teaching and learning and uh, really challenging the best and brightest in each state to, to solve the world's problems and to step up and be leaders and, uh, you know, take themselves seriously and, and um, you know, help them with a path to a kind of meaningful existence, really. Uh, so it's evolved over time, but that's, that's where it started. In Arkansas, uh, the legislation was passed in 1979. First session was in 1980, uh, uh, really supported by uh, Governor Clinton. Uh, for the first 38 years of the program, it was on the campus of Hendricks College. Uh, two years ago, uh, through the, they've had a regular grant process every three years where institutions can apply to host Governor School. Uh, for the first time, we had a switch two years ago, came to the, the campus of Arkansas Tech University. So we've been there for two years, and then there'll be another cycle in, in the next year where uh, they'll, they'll pick 
uh, a campus again for, for governor school. But right now we're at, we're at Arkansas Tech University. Um, like I said, we, we accept 400 students into the program every year. Um, when you apply, when students apply, they need to apply in one of nine specialties. Uh, we call these area one. Uh, think of them as um, kind of majors, if you will. Uh, and these are laid out in the original legislation for governor school. So the nine areas are art, drama, choral music, instrumental music, English language arts, mathematics, natural science, social science. And then there's always an extra category that changes uh, every three years with the host institution. Uh, this cycle, uh, we're doing cybersecurity. So if students are interested in computers, that sort of thing, that, that, that's a great area to go into. So when you apply to governor school, you apply in, in one of those nine areas, essentially. Uh, you can apply in more than one. In fact, I encourage students to apply in more than one. Uh, you know, two is, is, is kind of the norm. Um, I would also recommend that students apply in one of the arts if you have an aptitude in one of those. So art, drama, choral music, and instrumental music. Uh, I encourage that basically for, for the same reason that I encourage people to, to do, uh, you know, to apply in more than one category. Your chances are gonna go up significantly if you apply in one more than one category. And if you apply in the arts, we tend to have fewer students who apply in the arts. So your chances go up uh, quite a bit if you apply in one of the arts. Overall, uh, I know I, I get this question all the time, but overall our acceptance rate, once you've been selected by your school, so your school has a vetting process and, and they, they can they can nominate up to 10% of the junior class. Uh, but once you get past your, your school's nomination and you make application directly to AGS, uh, your chances of getting in are, um, well, the last three to five years, it's always been over 70%. So the lowest is about 70%. Some years it's higher. Of course, it depends on the number of students who, who apply. But it's always about, uh, you know, it's always over 70% that we accept. So you got a great chance uh, once you make application. So um, when we moved from Hendrix to Arkansas Tech, uh, we, we basically kept the same program that Governor School had had for the, the, the previous 38 years. Um, the, it's the same structure, the same outline, the same areas and categories. We just added a little bit of a uh, technology twist since that was appropriate to the campus that we have. We have those kinds of facilities. And so we take a kind of lightly themed approach to technology. Uh, and that allows us to kind of use technology as a way to kind of bind together some of the different areas. So for instance, um, I think the best example of this that I can give is what we do in art. So in, in art, you do very traditional painting and drawing. And so you'll come in, you'll draw a character, paint a character, then you'll do you know, traditional sculpture. You'll, you'll make that into three dimensions using clay. But then we move up the kind of technology scale and we use uh, 3D printers to uh, print uh, uh, substructures for the clay so that you can articulate it. Uh, then we use stop animation film and so you can use that articulation to animate your characters in film. And then we use motion capture software so that you can uh, put that into a digital environment and manipulate it that way. So that's kind of what we're doing. We haven't really changed the basic structure of art or what you learn or you know, design and color theory and all of that kind of stuff. We just have some technology that can bring you up to the present. And so that's kind of what we do with, with the program in general. And also it's a, it's a great way to kind of, we are parts of technology and we really, uh, you know, human beings are augmented by technology all the time. And, and we really learned that last year with our online 
uh, governor school and we had to go online and, and we have different relationships through these computer screens that we have face to face. And so part of it is a study. It's an experiment to see, you know, what that's about and, and how that technology affects us and, and how we interact. Um, so outside of area one, so you'll, you'll take a few classes in, in uh, you'll have probably two class sessions in area one every day. So, you know, you'll be in area one, you know, a couple of hours, three hours at the most every day. Uh, and then Monday through Friday. And then you also have classes in what we call area two and area three. And everybody at governor school takes area two and area three. It's, it's really probably the most common touchstone for governor school students across the 40 years. Is that, I mean, you know, you say area two, everybody's had the same, basically the same kind of area two experience. And, and we've continued that. It hasn't really, it, that hasn't changed at all, um, other than sort of modernizing some things here and there. Uh, area two is basically philosophy. Uh, most uh, high schools in the state of Arkansas don't have standalone philosophy programs or philosophy classes. So this is a foundational class that can help you make the transition to college um, and give you something a little different than what you get in, in your normal high schools. Um, in particular, we, we study epistemology or the nature of knowledge. How do you know what you know? How do you know what's real and what's not real? Is the, is the table in front of you more real than you know me talking to you on this screen? <laughs> Um, and so it gets into sort of basic philosophical concepts and, and how that affects uh, ethics and relationships between people. Um, so area two is about epistemology and you get, you get some exposure to philosophy, great conversations in area two. Area three um, has evolved a little bit over time. It, it, it's sort of subtly changed from time to time, but it's basically about personal and social development. Um, in its current iteration, we really stress civic engagement and community development. What we want are, is for students to learn something about themselves. You know, so we'll do personality surveys and things like that, Myers-Briggs kinds of things. Um, a lot of students do those now and they, they've probably been exposed to that. But the civic engagement and community development part, I think is, is, is really become the heart of area three. And so we ask students to kind of give back to their communities and think about how can they make a difference in the places that they live. Um, so for instance, a couple of years ago, we had students, it was right after the floods. So we had students who were doing projects on flood recovery and helping with that kind of thing. Uh, last year, we had a group of students who uh, they raised $5,000 in about five days for the Arkansas Food Bank. Uh, just on their own initiative. Uh, so it's those kinds of efforts that I, I think really make Area 3 special and, and um, uh, it's become a, a, a really cornerstone part of, of the program. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff, <laughs> right? So you go to class, you know, four hours a day-ish, and then the rest of the time is you have all of these possibilities, all of these opportunities to do different things. Every afternoon at four o'clock and six o'clock or 410 and 610, we call them 410, 610. Um, we have presentations, lectures, workshops. Uh, these range everything from, you know, lectures about uh, is there life on other planets to, uh, you know, painting workshops, how to paint to you know, uh, a history of boy bands. Uh, they're all over the place. Um, we also, uh, last year we started to bring in more uh, professional people that will talk about their jobs. Uh, so what it's like to be a lawyer, what it's like to be a doctor, what it's like to be a writer, those kinds of things. So those are opportunities as well. Uh, every week we have what are called impact speakers and impact movies. So everybody at AGS goes to these. Uh, we bring in nationally recognized speakers last year uh, and we, we do these on contemporary relevant topics. So last year we brought in um, Polly Price from Emory University, who's an expert on pandemics and talked about COVID-19 and, and government responses to pandemics. 
Uh, we also had a speaker come in and, and talk about uh, the George Floyd um, protests and incident and the sort of systemic racism in, in the United States. Uh, and Baratunde Thurston came in uh, and talked about that. Um, and that also became a part of you know, many discussions on campus over the summer. Uh, so, and then we have movies that we show uh, that are common to the entire group. And then we talk about those in area three classes and area two classes, and it, it kind of moves in and out of the curriculum. Um, so those are good. We also just show movies for fun. There's always a movie playing somewhere on campus and students showing up to just to watch movies and hang out. Uh, we have residential programs. So we try to do, you know, either in residential groups or in, in small groups of students, we try to do uh, tasks for them where they can get used to working in teams and, uh, you know, learn about sort of leadership and, and how to uh, collaborate with others which is not an easy thing for gifted and talented people. They're used to working on their own. So uh, we try to challenge them with, with group environments and, and you know, it's usually just fun stuff, but it has a real purpose to it. Uh, we also, you know, and then there's just fun stuff. We have concerts and paint wars and dances, glow runs. Uh, we also do field trips. You know, we bring in Shakespeare theater or go to Shakespeare theater every year. Uh, we go to Crystal Bridges, Clinton Library, you know, all of those kinds of things as, as well. Um, so there's always something going on on, on campus. Uh, that's Robin. She's part of my slides. I always introduce you, Robin, even though you're not, <laughs> whether you're there or not. Uh, that's me. Uh, so uh, big question for students about the food. Uh, the food's really good. Uh, we have a... Uh, a relatively new cafeteria, Chambers Cafeteria. It's the last five, six years that it's been built uh, or expanded. And uh, it's got uh, all kinds of different food. And so you have a selection of things and we get really good feedback ab about our food on campus. Um, and the people that work there are great. They, they, they're sort of, they're amazing. Um, and uh, students a couple of years ago really adopted the food service people for, for whatever reason. I don't, they just, they loved them. So, uh, and then we have this thing called Baztec in the middle of campus. <clears throat> Baztec has a, uh, it's got a Starbucks in it. It's got a Slim Chickens. It's got, you know, other kinds of food items. Um, students are welcome to use those and, and to buy things there. That is the one thing we don't pay for. We pay for their cafeteria stuff, but not the stuff in Baztec, but that's available to them if they want that. But really Baztec becomes a hangout place for AGS. We put an office in there. We put board games and, and crafts. We put in a pool table. Uh, we have karaoke nights. We have, you know, uh, these students are incredibly gifted and so they, they entertain each other. So they'll make their own concerts on campus, that kind of thing. Uh, so Baztec becomes kind of the center of things. If, if you don't have anywhere to go, you go to Baztec and you'll find something to do and, you, and somebody to hang out with. Uh, so uh, it's really, I think, a special part of, of the on-campus environment. Residence halls are great. Uh, we put AGS students in our two newest residence halls on campus in Nut Hall and M Street. Uh, you know, they're standard college dorms. Uh, the great thing is they're new. <laughs> and so they're, they're, they're in good shape. Uh, they have computers in them. There's ping pong tables in the basements. Um, our resident staff is fantastic. Uh, we have RAs uh, for the, uh, that basically live with the students while they're on campus. And they're all former, well, all but I think one, in the last couple of years, are former uh, governor school students. So they help to impart, you know, the traditions and history of governor school and uh, really help those students, you know, if they've got a hard time, if they're feeling homesick, you know, they, these are the people that they go to and they're kind of peers, but they're also kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of watching over them at the same time. So uh, it, it's a really special part of the program. Uh, 
our library facilities, classroom facilities are, are, are great. Um, on the right there is, is our music lab in the library. And we let, you know, any student, yes, the, the, the students in instrumental and choral music will use the online technology there, but uh, also any student can use the digital technology in, in the digital audio lab. And, and so students really have a broad range of access to campus while they're there. Um, and really, Governor School is the main thing going on on the tech campus. Uh, even before the pandemic, uh, our college students on campus uh, during the summers is extremely limited. It's very small. And so Governor School students really dominate campus. And, and we really kind of take over the center of campus. Uh, and so we keep it's it's we don't use the entire campus, but we use the, the, the most concentrated part in the center of campus. Uh, and it keeps us kind of all together and safe, but also gives students great access to our facilities. Um, we've got recreational facilities. They can use our workout facilities. Uh, we have uh, sports equipment and stuff like that that they can check out. We have a hammock grove. They can check out hammocks. Uh, so all of that we make available to our college students, um, but our AGS students have full access to all of that stuff. Um, these are just some pictures of the activities. Uh, you can see the, the paint war in the, in the upper left. Um, it, it, was, it was great, great experience for those students. They were picking paint out of their clothes, I think for years afterwards. All right. So this is the most important screen. Um, if uh, you know we're recording this, and so you'll have, you can have access to this later. Uh, but also, if you want to take a picture of this screen right now, uh, again, it's got the, the best contact information. The applications can be found at uh, our website www.atu.edu/ags. Uh, you can send any questions that you have to ags at atu.edu. Um, you can also feel free to email me directly. Uh, it's just jwoods at atu.edu. And uh, I can really help, you know, I can answer students' questions, parents' questions. I can also help with teachers and with uh, coaches and, um, you know, counselors that, that, that have questions about the program, um, anybody who is concerned about their student coming to governor school, please, that's what I'm here for. That's, those are the questions that I love. Even if students think that, okay, I've got, you know, uh, I have these obligations that I have to do for my sport, or I have these obligations that I have to do for um, my music program. Before you decide, <laughs> you know, make sure you contact me because I, I've had plenty of conversations with coaches and with teachers and with program uh, leaders. And we talk those things out and we talk about what's, what's going to be most important for that individual student, because that's, to me, that's the most important thing. I don't mind if a student decides not to go to AGS. I just don't want them to opt out of AGS because they think that they're obligated to something where, you know, a coach or a teacher might tell you, no, actually you should probably go to governor school and then we can make up for this. <laughs> you know, we, we usually find ways to work those kinds of things, those kinds of things out. So I'm completely open to those, to those discussions. Again, governor school this year, July 5th, August 1st, uh, applications are due on uh, January 20th this year. Uh, the application process involves, uh, usually you have to write a couple of essays uh, for most of the programs. You do have to get the nomination of your school. You have to get uh, some letters of, of recommendation. If you are applying to uh, one of the arts programs, we do uh, ask uh, you to do uh, auditions, but the auditions are pretty easy. Basically students film themselves doing the thing that they do, singing or playing their instrument or whatever it is. Um, and then uh, they submit those to YouTube and we have a private YouTube channel and we use those 
uh, for auditions. So it's usually pretty easy to, to, to put together. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's I, I think that's it in terms of presentation stuff. So completely open to questions. Uh, so fire away. So we did have some people join late as well as uh, pop in and yeah. out on Facebook. I, I, I do want to reiterate and ask this question. This is entirely free. There's no deposits. There's no any oh, yeah. out-of-pocket expenses. Entirely free. Yep. I, the, the only thing that you have to pay for is is getting to campus. <laughs> you got to have somebody drop you off. So, you know, gas to get to campus and then uh, somebody pick you up. And th that's basically it. everything in between we pay for. Uh, it does come up every once in a while because we do have students and, and Robin and I've talked about this a lot. Uh, we've always been, um, you know, we hate that we have some students who skip out on governor school because they feel like they have to work uh, over the summer. And, um, you know, I think I, I completely understand that and I understand where they're, they're coming from. I, I do like to talk to them to them a little more closely about, you know, what the long-term benefits of this are. And also, you know, if we're paying for room and for board uh, and for tuition on campus, you know, you're actually making a lot more money going to governor school than you are in a minimum wage job, if that's the, the job that you're working. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it's a, it, it's a kind of, it's a question of, of um, priorities and, and long-term versus short-term. And those are the kinds of questions that I like people to contact me about because we can talk through that and, and really talk about what's best for them. Because sometimes what's best for them is to, you know, if you got to work, you got to work. And if you're supporting your family and they're in a, in a place where, you know, this just isn't possible, you know, then maybe we'll, I, I would suggest to them to, to not do this. But in most cases, I think it's just a question of, of thinking about, well, you know, I think the long-term benefits could, could be greater if you go to governor school. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we, we talked through that, but yeah, absolutely free. It's one of the great things about the program. Don't have to pay a dime. So if any of our students or uh, attendees have a question, feel free to utilize the chat or the Q and A box, to ask your question. Um, a question that often comes up is roommate selection. Like how, how are roommates selected uh, yeah. for governor school? So that's a, uh, um, we select your roommates mainly for pedagogical reasons. Um, part of the learning experience is learning how to live with people that are not exactly like you um, and not from the same part of the state, may have a different background and so, we try to mix that up as, as best we can uh, for people. We want them to have an experience with, with other people. And it's also how we build community. Uh, if you just hang out with the same people that you always hang out with, it's very difficult to kind of create a new community. And so uh, that said though, um, for students that are a little bit nervous or reluctant about that, don't worry about it. You're all on the same floor in a dorm. So you may not have this, you know, your, your selection of your best friend as your roommate, but they're going to be right down the hall. <laughs> they're not going to be that far from you. Uh, and uh, so it's, you know, nobody spends that much time in their rooms during governor school anyway. <laughs> so it's usually just a place to, to kind of sleep for a little while and then get back at it. Uh, so, so yeah, we select your roommates, but don't worry, you, you know, your friends will be very close, uh, you know, just a few doors away. And kids uh, are allowed to go home on weekends. Do our kids also encourage to stay on campus over the weekend? Yeah, so they're uh, through the entire. I think we lost you for a second. On Sundays. So they can, uh, you can have a parent or uh, somebody else come and uh, check you out for the afternoon to do laundry mm -hmm. or to, uh, uh, did you all hear all that? I got a frozen screen for a second. You, you froze <laughs> at the very beginning and then you came back. Okay, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll just repeat it. We do you allow you to have a parent or uh, uh, an adult come check you out 
on Sundays. And so you can go, uh, you can go eat with them. You can go do laundry, whatever you want to do. But we do ask people to stay on campus the entire time for the, for the whole month. Um, if there, we try not to make exceptions to that. Uh, if there is a student who has a, a very special circumstance, so say you are a, I don't know, a national chess champion and the only world championship in chess comes in one weekend during AGS, okay, let's talk about that. But uh, no, we ask for a commitment to be there because that's part of the community. That's part of the experience. It's, it's really, you know, we you'll see when you get there, you wanna be away from home for a while. You wanna be kind of on your own and part of this community. And, and that's, that's part of it is kind of, um, you know, separating from your regular environment and embracing a new one just for a little while, just for a month, right? We had a question in the Q and A box. Uh, can we drive ourselves there? Now we ask you to, uh, to uh, be dropped off. Um, we, you know, honestly, we don't have the capacity for all of, the, all of those cars. Uh, and it would, it would make for some uh, really disturbing uh, parking problems, uh, but it, it's also a kind of a security issue and safety issue. Um, we, we try to keep students uh, on campus and, and keeping up with them uh, partially involves them not being able to jump in their car and just take off. Uh, so that's, that's part of the reason as well. But no, that, that, yeah, we, you can't drive yourself. Just get somebody to take you, you know, or ride with a friend if you've got, if you know somebody who's going. And so we've had some questions about um, tips about the questions themselves that, on, that are on the application. Do you have any recommendations of things to do or things to avoid? For any of our yeah, so uh, Dustin, you and Robin might have additional things to, to add to this, but from my perspective, uh, you know, what I look for, the keywords for me are, are interesting and meaningful. And so I think you need to kind of demonstrate that you are either currently doing something interesting or you want to do something interesting with your life. And that helps us to decide, you know, your contribution to the community. What we want from students, we don't have to have all perfect students. What we want is a great group of students who we know will bounce interesting ideas off of each other, you know, or that will push ideas in different directions that may not be, you know, the regular directions that you're usually used to right? We want a creative environment. And so that's what I mean by doing something interesting. Show that you can be creative and can think outside of the box and, and you know, are thinking about things beyond sort of just your regular process structure that you usually get in education. Um, no offense. I mean, I know people are doing beyond that. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, sometimes it can be a, a, a little canned. And so we want people to show that they can be creative. Okay. Uh, and then the meaningful part is, you know, um, we want people at governor school who are going to go on and do interesting things with their lives and are going to make a contribution to their communities and to the world that they live in. That's originally what this was all about. And, um, that I think that ethos is, is still there. And, you know, those two things are not unlike anything that you would get on a really good university's application. You know, that's what they want too. You know, we wanna be able to brag on our students who are going out and who are alumni of this program who've gone on to do wonderful things and say, hey, you know, maybe AGS had a little part of that or maybe they, they had an opportunity to influence other people while they were here that, uh, you know, sort of inspired them to do great things. And so, you know, it, it, we want an inspirational and creative environment. And so that's why, you know, interesting and, and meaningful are, are kind of what I key in on. How about you guys? What do you look for? So uh, Jeff had some great comments of, on things to, to kind of key into on when you're writing your essay. Um, a couple of comments that I'd make is spend some time really writing a good essay, right? So 
Um, this is an online application process, but don't do it on your phone and just type a few things. You really wanna spend some time really developing that essay, get somebody else to read it for you to kind of you know, check over it. Um, and I think that's gonna make for a better essay, a better application, and you're probably more likely to get accepted um, when you have that. Uh, we did have a, a unique question uh, in the Q&A, so thank you all for utilizing it. Uh, the question says, I'm the GT representative at my school. This is my first year working with high school GT students. I nominated all the junior GT students, which um, was the exact amount allowed to nominate for that school. Um, now I have a teacher that would like to nominate a student who is not considered a GT or is not identified GT. Can I retract any of the nominations in order to allow a student with lots of potential still, still to apply? So I would ask uh, the, the students, you know, it, it's really what it comes down to is the number of students who end up applying. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you've got, if you know that you've nominated some of these students and they, they're just not gonna do it, then yeah, absolutely replace that with somebody, uh, with somebody else. And no, they don't have to be in a formal gifted and talented program. So we have some great students who are like, uh, you know, um, some remarkable, say musicians that are, you know, they're decent students, but they're not your straight A, 34 ACT kind of student, but they're really remarkable musicians, right? So that's a perfect person for this program. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, yeah, absolutely. You go outside of your, just your, your GT students and, and uh, you know, make the opportunity, you know, uh, I would maximize the opportunities for your students. And so, you know, ask them, are you gonna apply for, you know, find a, a create a deadline for yourself. And I would suggest that the students probably need to be nominated pretty quickly here in the, in the next few weeks. And then I would suggest that, you know, they need to try to complete most of their application materials before they go away for the holidays. Um, that way, when they come back in January, it's just a process of, you know, uh, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and, and, and that sort of thing and, and doing review kind of work. Um, so I think you need to create a, a, a deadline for your students about commitment and say, okay, look, if you're not committed by this point, I'm going to go out and recruit some more students and fill those slots. Um, and I th that's perfectly legitimate to do in, in your own school. And logistically for that process, so, so um, nominators, so my counselors and GT, um, you can't go on there and necessarily delete a student. However, um, if you contact me at ags at atu.edu, the email address that we provided earlier, um, and tell me which students um, that you'd like to remove because they're not interested in attending, then I can do that on my end and I can, um, basically decline their nomination so that it opens it up um, to allow you to nominate more. Um, so like I said, that, that really needs to come. If you've nominated your maximum and you need to send an email to me um, to let me know which ones you need to remove so that I can, I can open it up for more for you. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we got another one in the chat that said, if a person is on medicine for something, how are they supposed to get a refill of their medicine when they, if, if they run out uh, and the person doesn't have a phone? So we have, uh, well, there's two things there. Uh, one is that we have, uh, uh, we have access to our full health services on campus. So the same uh, uh, health services that we use for our college students is used by the AGS students. And so we have nurse practitioners, we have a health center. Um, we can get them, you know, to uh, pharmacies or to uh, the, the local hospital. We've got a relationship with a hospital. Um, you know, we even have RAs that will go, you know, pick up prescriptions for students and things like that. Or, you know, uh, I have taken students to, uh, to pharmacies and to, the doctor and, and things like that before. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about that. We, we, we can handle that. Uh, in terms of phones, um, 
we actually allow students uh, to have phones. Um, we have a period on campus where they're not allowed to use that outside of the dorms. And so they don't have it on them all the time. Uh, there is, you know, uh, we do have a period where they, they get more access to it, but we're real calculated about that. We want students, we need students to separate from those devices while they're building relationships. Um, and so, you know, we have a good two weeks and, you know, maybe longer where they aren't using their phones all the time. It's not attached to them like it normally is. They can't have it though. It'll just be in their dorm room. And so they can text you at night uh, after they get back to their, to their rooms. Or if they're sick, you know, um, whether uh, they're in their room or whether they're talking to their RA and their RA contacts parents or whether the RA talks to us and, and we contact parents, communication is not an issue. We, you know, there, there are always ways around that. So you will be able to, to, to communicate with, with your student. I like these logistics questions because- Yeah, they're the hardest part. And those are the yeah. things that Robin does really well. So. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and, and I know you get, we got this question early on on, the, on Facebook, but uh, as of now, Governor School is expected to be on site but is there a possibility if there are uh, students with um, concerns or pre-existing conditions that have a fear of going on campus but would still like to apply? Is there a plan at all for having an online option? Yeah, what, what I would say is apply. Okay. Um, and then what we will do is kind of, you know, I think we need to judge the entire environment for AGS uh, for this summer because say, you know, you might be concerned right now, for instance, in our current environment, and we don't have a vaccine, we don't have, you know, and so going back on campus is a, is a natural fear. And so if it was, if we had to run AGS right now, uh, we couldn't do it on campus. It, it just, there was no way that that would work. But things are changing and they change so rapidly. And so and we want to get back on campus. So say we get a vaccine in April and it's widely distributed through May and June. Maybe our attitudes individually and as AGS are changed enough to say, well, wait, maybe it's safer in this environment, okay? But then we also will consider things in between. If you know, we need to go to a kind of social distanced environment. If it's still not comfortable enough where everybody feels good about it, we can, you know, maybe we go to socially distanced classes where people have to wear masks or uh, we do single uh, room occupancy rather than multiple uh, person occupancy in a, in a room. Um, there's all kinds of different options that we will weigh. Uh, all I can tell you is that we can't make that decision right now. Uh, it's going to change. And so go ahead and apply. It's not going to hurt, right? No matter how we do it. And we will tell you, you know, at some point we will have to make a decision. Okay. We're going full residential or we're going this partial thing, or we're going completely online. I mean, last year we didn't make that decision until it was six weeks before yeah. school <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, you know, hopefully we don't wait that long this year, but it, we've got time to make and those decisions. So, so please the, decision, the application decisions generally get made by the end of February, 1st of March. Um, but then students have until May generally and to let us know whether they're, they're coming or not. So there will be more information before the deadline of, of being able to tell us whether they're coming or not. There will be more information about what that's going to actually look like because because as Jeff says there's no way for us to know right now things are changing too quickly for us to be able to make that decision right now but but we will definitely give students information and, and, and parents more information about what exactly what exactly it'll look like um, before they have to make a decision on whether they're coming or not and and I know that the deadline to apply is January 20th is that received Correct. by or like postmarked by 
No, it's all online. So it's, it's, okay. it has to be submitted online by January 20th. Okay. And it looks like we have another question in the Q&A. What type of music does the instrumental music uh, program focus on? Yeah, so uh, our music instructor for the last uh, 13, 14 years now, <laughs> it's a guy named Rick Diamond. He is uh, the, he's the music director at um, Henderson. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a jazz guy so he has a jazz background he's a uh, percussion guy uh, but he has done everything from uh, classical pieces to uh, Led Zeppelin to uh, he does these jazz improv sessions uh, and so they do a, a lot of improv improvisation stuff uh, we take all kinds of instruments and he finds these amazing ways to put that stuff together so you know we'll have people that have like your classic kind of wind ensemble instruments you know you'll have you'll have brass and 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 you'll have you know your, your reeded instruments and you'll have percussion and things like that uh, but then you got people that play the piano you got people that play the violin you got people that might play the harp. <laughs> I mean, you know, they might play, you know, uh, the bass or the electric guitar or something like that. He figures it out. It's really kind of amazing. And, and uh, he is also really good about catering the kind of music they do to the students who get accepted. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's not just a question of what he wants to do. It's also about what the students want to do. And uh, there's a lot of kind of back and forth. And he's really good about communicating with students who are accepted ahead of time. And they kind of, you know, they work on that together. It's, it, it's, it's a great thing. I mean, it's, it, it's actually pretty special in the music program. Well, we're, we're coming up on the one hour marker. I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat or on Facebook. Um, I, I did ask, I want to ask though, did, do y'all have any other uh, final thoughts or suggestions. I know we're, we're still about a, a little over a month and a half from the deadline or two months, I should say, the deadline to apply. Um, how many people generally apply across the state every year? So, um, so we, yeah, so we generally have, um, we had just, just, just under 600 last year. Um, so we're, we're hoping for about 600 applicants um, uh, this year. Um, so, and like, so we take 400 out of those. So it's a, you know, a, um, a good percentage that get in. Um, my recommendation for, you know, for students that are interested is to really check out that information on the website um, and then talk to their counselor because that's the first step um, is, is talk to your counselor um, or your GT teacher to get nominated by the school. Um, and that's, that's where, the, where, where the whole process, the application process starts and start it sooner rather than later you know don't we don't want uh, you, you don't want to be waiting until January 1st to start you working on your application that's due January 20th because it's there there is some parts to it that are um that you have to go through so so as Jeff said earlier probably you know by December 1st we probably want to have those nominations made so the students are are working on their application I've actually already got some students that have already completed and submitted their application so um, so that's, you know, just so you know, like I have, I have, um, 587 that are already nominated. Um, and so, like I said, we have, you know, probably about 400 more that'll get nominated, um, within the next couple of weeks or so. So, um, just start the sooner, you, the sooner you can start, the better off you are. Well, I, I definitely want to say on behalf of all the gifted and talented educators in the state, thank you both, because I, I know your first year was the first time ever on Arkansas Tech University campus, and that was a challenge in itself. Last summer, it was the first time ever online, and that's a huge challenge in itself. So year three, we don't know what, what's going to happen. Um, but I, I do appreciate all your work and continuing the efforts of, of this amazing program for our rising seniors, our rising juniors, or they're their senior year next year. Um, and so I would just encourage, even when I was eligible as a high school senior, 
I said, you know, I, I probably just won't apply because I have a summer job, et cetera, et cetera. And it's one of those biggest regrets of my life that I, I didn't even apply because I was like, no, I'm not going to go. Um, so I, I would just encourage when students ask me, apply, even if you don't know yet, we don't know what the summer is going to look like. And it's better to have that option. And you can, you can always decline um, even if you get accepted later on. So um, I encourage all the students watching and, and that are uh, watching on Facebook or with us live, apply because it's it is one of those life changing experiences. One one final question I have though is that I know the alumni community. You said it's a lifelong um, connection with people that meet their sp uh, future spouse at governor school and things like that. Are there other opportunities uh, for maybe any of our uh, attendees this last summer or in previous years? Are there other opportunities for a governor school alumni to still contribute and be a part of governor school, whether that's as an RA or as a, as a teacher? Are y'all still accepting faculty? Um, yes, yes, no, and, and a great point. And uh, it was gonna be one of my final <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, we are accepting faculty applications. Um, and so we, uh, we consider a, a really broad range of backgrounds. Um, particularly in area two and area three, those aren't those aren't specific to a, a person's sort of academic background necessarily. There's all kinds of people that can that can do those sorts of things. Area one, you know, yes, you have to be an expert. You have to, in that field and have a specialty there, and you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to need to have a background in those. But in area two and area three, they're pretty broad, uh, and so there's plenty of people that that can do that. We have a good mix of um, uh, college faculty and uh, high school faculty that are that, that make up uh, the AGS uh, 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 faculty group. So please, yeah, if you have any inclination, you got a month free, please apply. I mean, you know, the 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 bigger the pool, the the better. And uh, we've had some wonderful people from the GT community teach at Governor School and, and they've just, they've been fantastic. So yeah, please consider that. Um, let me give one last, I, I know Dustin mentioned it, but um, just one last plea to the students too. Uh, Governor School is, you know, <laughs> I'm a scientist and I don't use this word lightly. Um, it's, it's magic and it, it's, there's something about the relationships there and the time of life and, you know, uh, the, the, the community that's already built. And we, we have a, an alumni day. And so, you know, alumni of governor school can always get involved there. And we have alumni groups and, and things like that. But um, for the students that are experiencing it on campus, it, it's really hard to put into words, but those relationships are so special. And, you know, people, I know people that are so passionate about governor school <laughs> and their experience there. And we're getting, you know, we've been doing this for 40 years. We have, you know, second generation students all over the place. Their parents went to governor school and now they're sending their kids to governor school. And I wouldn't doubt we're going to get close here in a few years, Robin, <laughs> we're get third generation people in, in governor school. So it, it's, um, it's really cool. And, and uh, people who, who kind of know about it and have experienced it, talk to them ask the other students who've been accepted, you know, ask the seniors who went to governor school last year. They're our greatest advocates and they will tell you the truth about the program and, you know, warts and all. And, uh, but, you know, they, they love it, you know, and it really is about those other kids and that's, that's why they love it. So um, yeah, please give it careful consideration. It's, and it's just so much fun, it really is. I might mention as well, you mentioned alumni. Um, so we do we do have our alumni as resident as RAs as well. So uh, any student out there that's that 
Now, not last year students, because we want them to have been in college at least in a year before they become yeah. RA. <laughs> um, but, uh, but any college students that are, you know, that are alumni of, of AGS, we highly recommend that and highly encourage um, that they apply to become RAs. Um, it is a paying gig, you know, um, for the summer and, it, you know, a month long thing and they get free room and board as well for that month. Um, so it actually is a pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty good, a pretty good gig for the month. Um, and those applications, so faculty applications are due by January 1st and the RA applications are due by January 20th, the same that the students applications are. So um, yes, we definitely encourage both faculty um, that are interested in, in teaching and then also um, students that might be interested in being RAs to, to please, um, please consider applying that it, you know, I, in talking to the faculty and RAs, it's almost as life changing for them as it is for the students that are that are attending as well. So, so we get, you know, we have some that are almost as passionate, uh, maybe not almost, they are as passionate um, about, about yeah, yeah probably, maybe even more so, you know, because they even do it year after year um, in a lot of cases um, that are just as, as passionate and, and committed to AGS um, as, as the students are and, and that life changing experience that, that's there. So. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Well, thank y'all both. Uh, and so all those applications for uh, faculty and students can still be found at the website, edu slash AGS. We posted it on Facebook and in the chat here. Um, but thank you all for tuning in tonight. And Dr. Woods, Dr. Lacey, thank you for giving us your time and presenting. We look forward to doing this uh, again next year too. Yeah, That's Dustin, good. thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Yes, that, thank that. you very much, Dustin. All right. On behalf of all of gifted and talented education in Arkansas, y'all have a good evening. Bye-bye.